Hey there boys and girls of the YouTube world. Today the Dop Dog and I are going to see if we can't get a 1961 Chevrolet back on the road for the first time in, who knows, 50 years, something like that. So I picked this thing up, I don't know, three, four, five months ago, when it was a whole lot nicer. Let's cut back to that. So we're on our way to pick this car up. We're following the owner from his farm to his mom's farm. It was his grandma's car. It is windier than the Dickens out right now, so the sound quality outside is going to be terrible. So we're just going to get this thing loaded up and uh, get her back to the shop and address it from there. There we go. I don't think it's gonna roll off on us. Well, as you can see, we're back to present day. It is actually Christmas day and we're slaving away at this stuff. It's 10 below zero with a pretty good wind chill. There's two feet of snow on this thing. Let's get that chipped off of there before we put it inside so we can save a little uh, used oil for the heat thing or bobber. I don't know. It'll, it'll be easier to drag in the last 20 feet too. So, here we go. Well, we got this green machine inside. You can tell it's a Bel Air because of the way that it is. You can tell that it's an Aspen tree because of the way it is. It says Bel Air on the other side. And also it's got two taillights, which a Biscayne would have as well. All right, let's let this thing unthaw. Thaw, whatever you want to call it. And uh, we're going to go work on something else. Because ain't nobody got time for that. As you can see, the 1961 Chevrolet Bel Air four-door post sedan piece of amazingness has now thawed out. So let's take a little closer gander at this goose. As you can tell, it's pert near Barrett Jackson material. We're missing uh, some trim on the driver's door there. Let me give you the story on this one. Uh, so there was an a I was selling one of these on the, the marketplace. And somebody commented below, it's like, hey, do you want another one? And I'm like, yeah, because I'm selling one right now, so why would I want another one? And of course, you know, my whorehouse prices that I'm asking for things. So I was like, well, what do you want for that thing? And they're like, I don't know, make me an offer. Long story short, uh, about nine months later, because this was in the dead of winter when I was trying to sell mine, I finally got rid of mine. And then I got, not, not the bubble top. I had the two four-door sedans, the Post and the hard top. Got rid of those. Made a deal on this one. It was supposed to be a V8 automatic car. You'll find out soon that it is not a V8 car. It is an automatic car. Sounds like this guy's mom had it and they just quit driving it. I asked why they quit driving it. They said transmission issues. So apparently the power glide went to poo. So you can't kill an old cast iron power glide, can you? We're about to find out if it's dead or not. We gotta get the old 235 underneath the uh, Hood running first so let's take a look at this thing it was last tagged in 1974 so coming up next week that'll be oh my gosh 49 years ago so pretty near 50 years you can see they had uh, her sitting in the weeds for quite a while oh it's got a t3 headlight in there these two headlights didn't fare so well the bumpers got some hooey's girls got some hooey's Hood is in okay shape. It's got the rare low production number factory cowl induction. I don't, it's not, not, it's not, it's not a cowl induction hood. It's the cowl induction hood hinge option, which is super, super rare for 61. Looks like this is an add-on antennae. I think the original ones are not right there, but what do I know? Uh, I did uh, modify the brakes via the uh, acetylene slotted drums to make this thing roll. 
It's a Bel Air, just like mine, so we might be able to donate some parts. Look at these front fenders. Usually they rot out right there. These ones are pretty good. Got a little whiskey dent there, but she's pretty solid. I did notice there was some uh, rust in the dog leg. Unfortunately, this is probably gonna be a parts car, maybe for the Bel Air. Duff, should we get after that? You know, bubble top? Uh, Ace Ventura, he uh, installed the windshield for us. Not so bueno there, but you know, you can see straight through it and it's kind of like air conditioning. I don't know what it is with the front clips. This side's pretty good, but the other side, the fenders fade significantly different on the front clips versus the rest of the car. And not because they've been body worked, but because I think GM painted the front clips with different materials or in a different location or something. I don't know. Most of my cars are like that. Again, this is a post car. The dead giveaway is the post. Oh, a little rust going on up there. That's interesting. Uh, like I said, Bel Air trim level, so it's not the bottom of the line. I think the Biscayne was the bottom of the line. Duff wants to check out the inside. Real bad. How about it? It's got a bench seat, uh, kind of a seat. Like I said, it's a uh, Got the Bel Air steering wheel, and then pal has got pretty swanky steering wheels. Other than that, I don't know what all is different other than the trim and the steering wheel. I'm guessing the door panels and the, the seat upholstery would have been different, but you know, clusters, dashes, that's all the same, I think. Uh, this guy was, or gal, was, was all business. No back seat, we don't need those where we're uh, going. So no hanky-panky, I guess that prevents that. You find any critters? Oh, you found the toy oh, fell through the floor. Oh boy, she's a little squishy, huh, Duff? Looks like that door trim is right there on the driver's seat. I always thought this little overhang here it was kind of neat on the uh, post cars. I'm guessing they painted the gas cap at a different time as well. Tailpipe is definitely not connected, so should be no mice in there. Yes! Find anything back there, Duff? Good? Yeah, I don't know. Hopefully there's like a briefcase full of money in the back because otherwise this is probably one of our most awesome purchases. It's got all the lichens growing on it, so if you're into the uh, satisfying pressure washing videos, we could definitely make one of those. I'm gonna have to look up and see what this light green is called. Seafoam, hopefully, hopefully they call it seafoam green. 61s are the only year with that sweet little widow's peak, unibrow, I don't know what you want to call it. Of course, the uh, valances are completely annihilated, like they all are. It's even, they're missing on the front. But yeah, I think all the trim is, it's, it's in terrible shape, but the trim is there. This car isn't that rusty in the quarters and stuff. Even the dog legs down here. Pretty good, and it ain't all banged up. It definitely needs floor pans. Des Duff showed you, there's a little rot in that door there. God, it's a shame that, is this glass in it, Duff? No, no, the one up here. Oh yeah, somebody took that one out. No, it's in there. It's just, it's in the track, but it's off the regulator. Huh. That's pretty nifty. Fun fact, I think convertibles have different windshield, but hard tops, and bubble top, anyway, this windshield would fit in my bubble top. If it was in better shape, we would swap it, but it is not. Oh, uh, Iowa Classic Car Ryan was trying to tell me that, no, you gotta have bubble top or convertible windshields. But uh, in fact, convertible windshields and bubble tops do not interchange, but sedans and bubble tops do. Hey pal, you think you could get this cowl induction hood setup open for me? You know, take a break from the mousing? No? It's all on me? Okay, I'll get this one. Did you just fall through the floor again? You can't have nice things. I know there's no lever inside. Is this cable open the hood? Oh my gosh. This thing is hoisted. Oh, it's down here. Son of a piss. Oh, 
looks like the main catch is not anywhere close to catching, so it's just a safety catch. Safety third, kids. Why did that pull it closed? Oh, okay. Oh, those foot hinges are real good shape. I'm gonna need my locking plate. The good news is the hood is in pretty good shape, but the hinges are completely tacoed. I think she was pretty much a stripper model here. I think we got an automatic transmission. I don't even know that this car came with a radio. That was probably an add-on. What do you think, Duff? Does it look like a factory radio? I think it's gone, whatever it was. Oh yeah, 61's got the glove box in the middle. Kind of a silly thing to do, but whatever. Oil bath, air cleaner, no power steering, no power brakes, no air conditioning. Uh, the South Dakota meth heads. I'm on meth. Got the radiator, but they left us the flexi hose. How nice of them. Or at least, see this, oh, it's spliced. I was gonna say, I'd rather have a spliced hose than a flexi hose, but they spliced it because they needed a heater connector in it. Or was that the block heater plug-in? Probably. 235, was it 61? Oh, 62 is the last year of the 235. So second to last year, so, you know, it's real good by then. Uh, Bluetooth plug wires, points ignition, oil draft tube, fuel pump, dipstick Jimmy for the uh, power slide. How does that look? Oh, it's nice and full and red. That power glide's fine. Easy to work on starter, cause you know, it's right there. Looks like it's still got the Delco plugs in it. The valve cover's on it and the air cleaner's on it. So, I mean, it should be pretty much ready to run after 48-ish years. Where's the engine dipstick at, Jimmy? Dipstick! Uh, 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 oh, no. there it is, right there. Oh yeah, nice and black, right at the full mark. Good to go. Red plug wire, it was fast. Red heater hose, super fast. All right, so what are you doing in there? Oh, you're now in the trunk? Did you find that briefcase of money by any chance? No thumbs? Do you want a light? Um, it looks pretty empty. Is it a small briefcase? Maybe a sixer of Budweiser? Some vintage sandwiches? A 14 inch spare tire. How about the bumper jack? Is that in there? First it's no thumbs. Now he's like, I can't talk. What's back there? Animals? Fecal matter. You're not rolling in it. So what could it possibly be? Well, this is a first here. Duff going through the back seat to get into the trunk to do some hardcore inspecting. Anything good? No six by nines in the speaker deck? We appreciate the effort. You're always going above and beyond, pal. So let me give you an ear rub for that. Thanks a lot. I mean, that's about the best we can give you. You're a good puppers. Okay. Oh, hey, look. A comb. Oh, sorry. You deserve more pets for all that hard work of going in the trunk. Are you not claustrophobic by chance, are you? Not even a little bit? Yeah, you're right. You'll go places that uh, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin will never dream of going to. Okay, back at it. Ooh, look at that floor mat. Is that original or uh, is that the, the, I don't know, the New Orleans Saints thing? I can't even remember what they call that emblem thing or mabopper. Oh my gosh, look at this duff. Oh, it's a, it's a Kreger lug nut. Oh, somebody got those way before us. Dang, I guess these make really good uh, plugs for heater hoses. That's what somebody commented in the last video. Where's the ice scraper from? T. Ty Able Service Incorporated, Highway 101 and Minnetonka Boulevard, Deep Haven. Uh, is Minnetonka in Minnesota? I believe so. That's where the Tonka trucks are made, right? But the phone number is uh, GR 
303-293-9948 if you want to give them a call. Ty Abel Service Incorporated. Oh, it's a Firestone. Oh, we're keeping that for sure. Good thing we found that because it doesn't look like there's anything else in the interior that is noteworthy other than that comb. And, uh, yeah, we don't have the afro to put that in. <sighs> what a score. I wonder if Ty Abel Service is still in existence. They're not? Oh, thanks for that, Duff. You want to lift her up in the air, take a look at the bottom side? Yeah. Hopefully you didn't get fleas or lice from that trunk. We interrupt your regularly scheduled programming to bring you this little tidbit about Ty Abel service. So Ty Abel was born in Chaska, Minnesota and graduated from there in 1933. He wanted to be a doctor or a pharmacist, but with the Great Depression, he ended up having to go to work to help his father. So he worked at a service station for a while. Uh, he eventually married Elsa, his wife, and started his own service station, which was a standard oil dealer in 1941 on the northwest corner of County Road 101 and Minnetonka Boulevard. Uh, he went off to the war, fought for our country, came back, and in 1946, a competitor put up a, another gas station on the opposite corner, so the southeast corner of Minnetonka and uh, County Road 101. And, and uh, they didn't do so well because Ty Abel had all the service, so or all the, uh, everything everybody needed. So he ended up buying that station from his competitor and uh, he pretty much ran it ever since. It's been called Ty Abel Corner, it sounds like, ever since then. I can't really tell the town. Wayzata, I think, is the name of the town. It sounds like he was a big part of the community. He was a part of the church, the Lions Club, the City Council, the uh, Commerce Club, all that good stuff. So it sounds like he's a big part of the community. It sounds like they were open from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. seven days a week. Basically him running the entire show if he had to make a service call on his 1935 Ford tow truck. He would uh, put a sign on the door that said he'd be gone away for an hour. Uh, they, he pumped your own gas, or he pumped your gas because there was no automatic nozzles. People didn't pump their own gas back then. Wash your windows, check your oil, check your tires, all that good stuff. The full service stations. Uh, raised a family there. Sounds like he had some rental properties and moved around town from in town to a farm and all that good stuff. Sounds like he was a really big member of the community. I, I'd really dig information like this. Chin dug most of this stuff up for me, so I just wanted to give you guys an update because. I thought this was cool. There's some cool old pictures of uh, Ty and his service station. So yeah, it's just really neat seeing the history of all this stuff and uh, how these small businesses thrived and how every community had several of these little gas stations and now we have these one giant gas stations and a lot of these small communities are, are pretty much dying. So it's cool that uh, we found that scraper in this car and Chin dug up this information and uh, I think Ty Abel lived to be 94 years old. I think he died in 2000, January 19th, 2010. So uh, yeah, he's, he's been gone for a few years, but his legacy clearly lives on. It sounds like, like I said, they still call it Ty Abel Corner. So I just wanted to give you that update. Uh, got a soft spot in my heart for standard oil stuff. I've had a lot of 35, six Ford trucks. So that's pretty cool. Had a flathead in it. So uh, a lot of ties. And then we found that scraper in this car. So it's cool to spread this history on and share it with all you guys. So now back to our regularly scheduled programming. Oh yeah. Chin would have said this, but you know, he's got a voice of an angel. That is the voice of an angel. Your voice is like a combination of Fergie and Jesus. I guess he just doesn't like being in front of the camera, so here I am. We'd have Duff do it, but he doesn't say much. All right, let's get back at it. Comment down below if you know what this is. Is that a Chinese elm? I don't know. So apparently this thing has had a really rough life because lower control arms are tacoed right over. And that maybe was from when it was sitting in the dirt and they drug it out of the hole that it was sitting in, which was about to right here. But that cross member, that wasn't from dragging it across the yard, I don't think. I think this thing saw some approaches at maybe some very high speeds. Who knows? I think the early 235s had a mount up here, engine mount, and then the later ones are mounted on the side like a later small block Chevy, or later small block Chevys had that front center mount. Also, early power steering was run off the back of the generator, the more you know. I think this is one of the last years of the generator. Maybe it was the last year, who knows. Again, this control arm's tacoed over. 
exhaust. She's a Bluetooth as well. I don't feel like the exhaust cam is going to do much this week because it's probably just going to come out right there once we get it running because we will get it running. It's got the big old clunky cast iron piece of amazing ingenuity that is the power slide, the slush box. Yeah, it's going to be real good. There's the floor where the duffel up, I guess, fell through. Whoops, my bad. X-frame car, got your hanger bearing there. You guys seen it a million times. You can check out the heater box from below the car, another uh, lesser known option on 61s from the Midwest. Oh, it does have a heater, so that's an option. You can get them without heaters. What else? That floor pan's pretty soft. This one's just dented. Is it a, is it a posi? Most definitely not. Dang it. Oh, she's got some, she got some wear in the old ring and pinion. It's already got the delete option on said park brakes. So that's good. It's got the original Delco pleasureizers. This must have been when he was sniffing out. Some critter made a nice home back here. A little nest action going on. Ooh. What is that? Is it still in there? Yeah, that is, what the hay? All of the hay in there. That was a much larger animal than a mouse. We're not gonna be want a torch in back here because that's gonna go up like kindling. I suppose they were tying up the brake line with that or uh, just got her wrapped up from going across the field. These guys were farmers, pretty big operators back in the day it sounds like too, so. I'm guessing this thing saw some field time. Fuel tank isn't rusted out. I'm sure it's super good. The gas is probably still good in it. 1974, was that Nixon? Kind of been pretty close to Nixon shortly thereafter. Was he like 71, two? All right, furnace is kicking on. So let's get this thing on the ground, do our thing. All right, we're back working on this thing after a short hiatus. Mr. Meeseeks is our battery sponsor this week. I'm Mr. Meeseeks, look at me! Uh, we don't have any battery cable ends, so we just got these locking pliers here. Now this end I did strip back a little bit, Duff inspected it. He says it's plenty good, so we're gonna hook this up. See what happens, of course both the cables are black. I think the factory cables on these things were black. I don't know, I could be wrong. But yeah, it looks like it's never been swapped out, so. No smoke. Got our loser switch hooked up. That's the other thing uh, with this big cast iron bell housing on these power glides, there's no access cover to get in and pry on the flex plate. And there's no bolt holes in the front of the engine to bolt on, an, on a, a pulley. Like the harmonic balancer and the pulley the main pulley on the crankshaft, they're all one, and there's no bolt going into the crank to uh, turn. So short of, they make these like chain, I don't know what they're called, you know what I'm talking about. This chain that wraps around, it works for, I don't know, we always use them on hydraulic cylinders for hanging onto the cylinder. And then it's got this bar that, and it hooks the chain into it and you use the bar as a lever. I don't know what they're called. But it's called chain wrench, okay? If we could wrap that chain, if I had one of those, I don't have one either. If we wrap that chain around the lower pulley, and put a bar on it, maybe, but again, I might share the keyway, but it's just gonna turn over when we hit the loser switch. I got a feeling it's it's not, but let's say that it is. All right, here we go. Okay. I'm sure it can't have anything to do with the corroded battery cables or the fact that they have uh, no insulation left in them. It's a new battery. The starter's trying. So the old starter's kind of dancing around in there a little bit. I'm gonna see if we can get you guys in there a little bit closer and show you what's going on. It seems like he's kind of wiggling around a bit. Hey! Are you kidding me? You wouldn't believe it, Duff. It's turning over. I swear it was. What a deal. 
All right, I guess uh, next thing is we're gonna pull some plugs out, see how they look, try to find some plug wires. We do have one wire hooked up yet. So we uh, got a basis for where our wiring should go. One, five, three, six, two, four. Of course the coil is missing. Why is everybody stealing the coils? Coils never go bad. I don't care what Iowa Classic Car Ryan says. It's never the coil. Not never, but rarely, rarely, rarely ever the coil. Why do people steal them? I'm thinking that's the problem. I'm guessing they cut the end off the wire, sure enough. Okay, well, maybe we'll pull those plugs out and see if we got any compression before we get crazy. We might even pull the valve cover off, see how sludgy it looks in there. It is the old 848 head number, which is a pretty good one as uh, far as 235s go. So let's uh, do a little investigating and go from there. So we know that the distributor current's clockwise, and this is number five. 15 is too young, 36 is too old, 24 is just right. So this should be number one. So we are gonna mark number one before we even get started. Paint markers, you need one in your life if you don't got one. Remember that 1960 Chevy that we had that the distributor wasn't turning? Yeah, I mean, hopefully we don't have that again. Is our distributor spinning? <laughs> That's gonna be a problem. Oh yeah, that's right. And when these 235s run, the distributor, the whole thing turns because the vacuum advance is external. So when it's dancing around like that, don't say you forgot to clamp the distributor down. Let's see if it does in fact turn clockwise and that it does in fact turn. Oh, come on. I decided to stop doing starter things again. See that starter moving around there? It's like the bolts are loose. I saw it bump clockwise. It's good enough for me. Let's go ahead and get this main wiring harness out of the fans while that's turning around. Well, I suppose as we start turning this thing over, it's gonna be pumping transmission fluid out too, huh? Yeah, that's not gonna be good. Oh, look at this belt misalignment. I didn't even notice this generator, but it's got two pulleys on it. So I thought, oh man, that's cool. Came off a truck or something, cause you know, 235s don't have multiple pulleys, but. Look at the misalignment in that thing. That's like a full belt off. Wow, good stuff. That old Delco, Delco, Deco belt is holding strong though. So we got that going for us. I'm sure these Delco plugs are like brand new. Oh. I don't care what people say. Spark plugs love impacts. What do you think they put them in at the factory? Guarantee they weren't threading them in by hand. I'm probably gonna wanna save that washer. I guess we haven't even looked at the spark plugs. Uh, they're not looking good. I've seen worse though. That one's a little rusty. And by a little, uh, that's a lot rusty. Can't even read the numbers on these old AC plugs. That was a spark plug. It's down there hanging out with the spark plug socket in the floor drain. You ever notice that when you drop a spark plug, nine times out of 10, it ends up landing on the electrode. It's kind of like dropping buttered toast. It always lands buttered side down. Or dropping a cat, it lands on its feet. I mean, not that I've ever dropped a cat. That pudding feller. He's probably dropped a cat. He's all into drop kicking things. Not the worst you want to come out of the hole. Yeah, none of these spark plugs look real good. That one's not as rusty as that other real rusty one. Let's see if we got any compression. Of course we're not getting a gauge out. I got a feeling if we uh, are gonna try to start this thing, we're gonna need a starter because that thing's not happy. We ain't got much for compression either. Let's see if the valves are stuck. 
sure they aren't. Let's take our handy dandy flathead screwdriver. Take our flat screws out of the valve cover here. See what we got going on under there. I'm sure we don't have any stuck valves. I think we did a 235 one time that had a stuck valve or two. Is that that gold 61? This guy's stuck. Could be. I'm running my little thumb compression test or middle finger, forefinger, whatever finger I was using, index finger. Definitely wasn't my pinky. We don't do pinky finger compression tests around here. As for those folks that drive Dotsons, uh, compression's not looking good. It's, it's, uh, it's not non existent, pretty much. That wasn't glued on too bad. Pretty excited about that. Well, I don't see any that are floppy loose, but sometimes they'll get sticky and they just return real slow so you don't get good compression. It's not all rusty in there. There's some cobwebs, but this is where your oiling comes out for your oiling system. Usually that little smashed metal tube sticks around a little bit further. Well, Puddin, he found out that if you got the wrong head bolt in there, you don't get any oiling up there. And then, of course, these are your adjusters. These are an adjustable rocker. So you loosen that, I think it's a 5 ace jam nut. And then you turn that with your flat screwdriver, and that's how you uh, adjust these things. So let's, uh, let's spin it over with the loser switch and see if everything's going up and down like it should. Everything looks good here. They're all returning quick. Sometimes it'll take a millisecond for them to come back if they're getting all sticky, but yeah, I think the cylinders are just really dry. I don't know. Put some oil in there and that'll just automatically bring back compression, right? Sure. I'm gonna spray some scroil on all this stuff while we got her apart, you know, cause why not? Croil, the best selling Best selling, best smelling penetrating oil there is. Don't get it in your eye. It's, it's probably not as bad as Zeppelin. That old Zeppelin is terrible when you get it in your eye socket, but it doesn't smell nearly as good as the old Croil. Now watch me get some in my eye right now. I wonder what it tastes like. Good news, we're not gonna try it. So I'm gonna spray a little of this in the cylinders. And then we're gonna have to clean up some points. You know, all the stuff. Croil it up. Oh, that's a solid stream right there. You're not gonna get a good healthy stream like that from your WD-40, I can tell you that much, kids. It's key to longevity. A nice, solid, steady stream. Just ask your grandpappy. He knows a lot about penetrating oil. I'm gonna go see if I can't find some spark plugs too before we get too crazy trying to fire this thing up because those things are not looking good. We gotta find a coil too. What a piece of crap we got here. All right, let me back in a second. Scrounged up a new coil, and by new I mean brand new. Let's take the old Hansi file here, clean up the points a bit. Come on, why did I put that wire there right in the way? Oh boy, and those ones are furry. I think the furry ones went away in the 80s, but that's besides the point. I'll just take that fur off there and she'll be shiny like a diamond. Oh my gosh. A lot of grit in there. Okay. And then you got to in the old Mortsky flick, let's bump her over here so they're closed. Get the old patented Mortsky flick. Sometimes works best when you got juice going to them, but 
you know, new year, new Mortsky. We're not gonna electrocute ourselves this year. Cheese and rice. By the power of Grayskull. Ouch! Yep, it's got spark. Let's do it again. Ow! Ah! I don't know why it's shocking me. Son of a biscuit. Foreshadowing? Maybe. All right. Look, our negative side of the coil of the distributor. Positive side up to our positive battery cable. Where our locking pliers clamp to said battery cable. All right. Let there be spark. Not going to my fingertips. <laughs> We might have to. Oh yeah, we should probably. You know, we haven't worked on a starter in a while. Let's get this thing up in the air and figure out what the hold down situation is or lack thereof. Wow, that is not healthy. We haven't worked on a starter in quite a while and I'm all right with that. But we either got a bolt that's loose or broken. Or maybe missing. Who knows? Let's get that raccoon poop out of the way. Oh, get it right on my fingers, you know. There's a bolt right there. Let's tighten that one first. See how it goes from there. Oh yeah, that's a real sweet area to get onto with a wrench. Maybe why it's loose. And we're not gonna get in there with a socket. Perfect. That one looks pretty tightish. The bottom one's got to be looser. Let's get her up in the air and take a look. Well, you can move her a little bit down here. This one's, oh yeah, that might be uh, the issue. Give her a good snug ear. She'll be real happy like. All right, one starter overhaul complete. All you had to do was tighten a bolt. There's what I was talking about, how you can't pry on the uh, flex plate. The old cast iron boat anchor there. Did I acknowledge how beat up this oil pan was? That's not good. And when I was rolling this thing today, I noticed a whole lot of clunking coming from underneath. Oh. Yeah, there's our clunking. So the drive shaft is connected, but the hanger bearing is uh, not really hanging out. What's it look like in there? What can you see? I'm guessing bolts broke off for it. That's gonna make some noise. And I don't think I got one of those on hand. Hmm, that's pretty neat. That's pretty neat. We're just gonna forget like we even saw that. See, Duff's just turning a blind eye to it. I can't even steal this drive shaft for that car, it's so crappy. All right, we got power hooked up to our coil. Let's see if just by flicking it, it sparks. And nothing. Why is that? It is in fact a positive. That sucked up there. What if we, if we just touch this to a ground, it should cause the coil to fire. Right? So our coil's working. Imagine that, these furry old points. Ain't cutting it. Well guys, I think we're gonna have to put a new set of points in, you know? As much as it pains me. These things just ain't doing it. I'm gonna go see if I got some on the shelf. 
stay tuned. Okay, new set of points installed. What's the screwdriver you need to get this nut off? It's like a round screw with a flat on each side. So it's like you need a screwdriver that's open in the middle. Somebody let me know, because uh, yeah, I'm just using a screwdriver and you tap it with a hammer and of course I busted this Bakelite insulation, so. Anyway, it's a terrible design by GM. You guys know how much I love GM and, and only bash other auto manufacturers, but this Delco Remy distributor nut here really grinds my gears. You know, that really grinds my gears. All right, let's see if we got some sparky spark now. Come on, starter. All kinds of spark. And we also got the wire hanging in the fan again. Perfect. How can we fix that? All right, so I guess we're to the point of cleaning up this terrible distributor cap. And oh, it actually doesn't look too bad inside. Put some plug wires on, plugs in it, and then uh, figure out the fuel situation. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, right? Right. Look at here, we scrounge up some new Delco R43 Sparkum plugs. Oh yeah. We're treating the old 61-235 right. Don't worry, it did not hit the floor and bend the electrode in it. Of course I properly gapped these to 35-ish thousandths before we installed them. Yep, you can see it right there. Perfect. is wrapped up hopefully let's see what we got going on the uh, fuel system here a little croil on our wing nut oh goodness it even turned out what a deal what a deal we're gonna get lucky today ain't we duff it's holding that in place a lot of nothing Odds of this linkage being free. Choke is free. Where's the throttle linkage? I would have hated to have been the engineer to have to figure out this throttle linkage geometry and stuff. Oh boy. It is slopped out down there. This thing's got some miles on her. In the what, 13 years it was on the road. Okay, the uh, high idle linkage is not hooked up okay and carb is seized seize the car i guess we'll take that off and try to loosen it up Well, the old, I think these are a Rochester. Sure, doesn't look too bad. Sure enough, a Rochester carburetor, made in USA. Patent supplied for. It doesn't look too bad. I think just the uh, steel on steel has rusted in place, so maybe we'll give it a little heat and see if we can't get that butterfly loosened up. The heat goes a long ways, kids. I guess it's about that time. Give her a tickle of hot sauce, see what happens. My only concern here, only, my biggest concern is the uh, 
lack of compression. But uh, maybe we made up for that for some, with some new ignition points, you know, points, plugs, wires, coil. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'm not, I'm not sold on it. This thing is, I guarantee it almost, it probably would have read less than 5 PSI and everything, but we put that coil oil down the uh, cylinders. So it's probably fine. A little hot sauce. Coil wire. Be strong. Little Delco Remy starter. Slingshot engage. Slingshot engage. Let's double check. We still got spark. Lots of spark. What is that noise? Like oil spraying? Leaves rattling? I don't know. Come on, baby. Not even a pop. You know I don't like giving up, but short of pulling this head off and touching up the valves and unsticking a bunch of sticky piston rings, I don't know what we're gonna do. We've tried this, the Y block. Uh, another six cylinder Chevy that was a 230, I believe, and like a 64 to 66, or maybe it was a 250. The Cadillac. Oh, we got that spinning over. If you don't have compression, you just you think you gotta have what squeeze, bang, boom. I don't know. We're not even getting a pop. I thought this engine was going to be stuck tight, so this is kind of surprising me that it even turns over, but without any stinking compression. I tell you what, it's getting kind of late here tonight. I'm going to throw some oil in these cylinders, and maybe that'll magically rejuvenate the cylinder walls and the piston rings and everything else and the valves that the, the compression's leaking by and it's just gonna work fantastic tomorrow morning. Or not, I don't know. And to be honest, I didn't really wanna get too deep into this car anyway, cause A, it's a 235, nothing wrong with a 235, but uh, the drive line's screwed up, we need a radiator. Um, the foot feet linkage is all messed up, there was a bunch of wire holding that together. We don't have brakes, we don't have a windshield, we don't have floors, the seat's pretty terrible. I kind of just want to use this as a parts car for the bubble top and get working back on that thing. So, we'll give her a little oil down the cylinders and uh, we'll go from this. All right, we're back today and we're breaking out all the stops. We got 24 volts hooked up. We got, was it? Nikki is our other battery sponsor this week, along with Mr. Meeseeks. We got these things tag teamed together. We got ground going to ground and then power going to ground. And we just gotta hook this up to the battery. We're gonna hook our ignition and our loser switch up to 12 volt power. And hopefully zing it over real fast and that'll boost up our compression along with all that Marvel Mystery O we put in there last night, she's gonna pop right off. Said nobody ever. All right, got the hot sauce in there. Let's see how this thing goes. Let's see how much the starter likes.
something that's welded the contacts together or something. And that might be the end of our starter here. What if we take the loop? Did we weld our loser switch together? It appears our solenoid and our starter, the contacts have welded themselves together. that happened with our bunch of 24 volts before. I guess we're going to try pulling the starter out. Dug through my stash, grab this core small block starter. I think it's core. Anyway, just pull the selenite off that. Put her on here. Let's see if she'll spin over. I don't know. I've never had that happen with a uh, starter selenite before on 24 volts. Believe me, we got experience. Here we go. Oh, should have put a Bendix on it while we were at it. All right, let's hook up the coil and give her some hot sauce, see what happens. Uh-oh, magic smoke. spark. Why don't we have any spark? Oh, look, is that wire came off the distributor? There we go. Now we're going to have all of the spark. Yep. That starter is real unhappy. Yeah. I don't think 24 volts was meant for this whole starter solenoid combination we got going on here. It stinks real bad. All right, I don't think we're gonna go any further with this thing. Like I said, it's probably just a parts car for the 61 bubble top. I wanna take the transmission cross member out and put it in this 63, cause that one's missing that. The starter's smoking real bad. We got no compression. We know where we end up with that when we crank them over with 24 volts. It ends up like that 63 Chevy pickup and the Y blocks and the Cadillac engines. It just doesn't come back to life. And I don't want to tear real deep into a 235 because it's not going to be a good 235 when we're done. I don't really need a 235 at this time. So I think that's uh, pretty much where we're going to wrap it. We gave her a shot. But anyway, click the link down below. Get yourself some uh, Mordski merch. Um, go check out the Facebook page, look up Mortsky Repair. There's a Mortsky Repair fan club and there's a Mortsky Repair Facebook page. Follow them both, share memes, see what we got going on, all that good stuff. All right, remember, it doesn't matter get done as long as you're having fun. Stuff without compression is not fun.